Good morning, gang. Happy Monday morning. So, back to the grind. All right. Uh, so, I want to kind of touch on something today that was brought up to me in a email that I got over the weekend. It's a topic I've talked about a little bit in the past, but, you know, kind of want to give you some ideas. And obviously, we've got new people here. Uh, but what I want to talk about is how not to be a victim. Okay. Uh, now, I understand in the family here, we've got people anywhere from their 20s to their 80s, men, women, living in the city, living in the burbs, living in the country, whatever it is, okay? This kind of applies to everybody. Now, what I, what I want to talk about here is it's not self-defense or anything like that because I can't I can't give you self-defense lessons okay I mean if you're five foot two and 65 years old versus you're six foot eight pushing 300 it, there's complete different ways of doing things okay you know but the point of this is is to know how not to get in trouble how to keep yourself out of trouble all right you know one thing that I do I just have this advantage over a lot of people. When I'm out with Mrs. P or out with friends and we're walking somewhere, I like to stay in the back of the group. Let everybody walk in front of me, okay? And I have a very good reason being. If somebody's up to no good and they're looking at, you know, the people in front of me, Mrs. P or anything like that, and they're behind me, they got to go, holy crap, here's this guy that's almost seven foot, 300 pounds that I've got to get through to get to her. Maybe this isn't a good idea. And the other thing is because of my height, I can usually see over a crowd. And so I can see if there's any potential threat in front of me. Okay. So that's, that's a good piece of situ situational awareness for me. Doesn't work for everybody. Okay. I get that. So what you've got to figure out is how you can be as safe as possible. Now, we all know that today is the first business day and the courts are going to be packed with, you know, God knows how many eviction notices being filed. And, you know, y'all were telling me about U-Haul trucks and apartment complexes and people that are already moving out and, you know, eviction notices being signed. There's going to be a lot of desperate people out there in the next few months, okay, starting today. You don't know what they're capable of, okay? Do they need money? Do they want a car? You know, whatever it would be. I mean, do they need a, a house to stay in? You know, so I'm going to give you a few scenarios and things on how to do, you know, how to protect yourself from becoming a victim. All right. So we'll take this. Let's start by saying you are going to the store, whether it's the grocery store, the hardware store, Walmart, the mall, whatever you would be. All right. Common sense says, if at all possible, go in groups. Okay, you know, because the more people there, the less chance of a bad guy trying to harass you. All right, obviously, if it's a whole gang of them, but I don't see that happening. You know, it's most, you know, a lot of this is going to be individuals. Okay, I'm not saying all the time, but you know, gang crime on one person. Okay, if you're walking through the south side of Chicago, sure, it's going to happen, but if you're in podunk iowa here and going to walmart you know i don't see a gang sitting outside walmart trying to pick on you know little old lady or little old man or something like that so so you know if you can go in groups i don't think i have to tell anybody this at least in the states because historically we all do it anyway is park as close to the store as possible okay but while you are in the store Keep an eye out on the people. You're doing your shopping, but kind of watch something. If you see that guy in the orange jacket, well, however, just describe him, okay? And three times in, in the store, you've been in the same aisle as he is, he might be watching you. So pay attention. So start circling back. Go back to where you were before and see if the guy goes back to where you, where you were before. You know, if you were looking at candy bars and now you're over in hardware, go back to candy bars. If the guy all of a sudden shows back up at candy bars, go find a store manager. Okay. Paying attention to your surroundings. A lot of people don't do this. You know, they're down on their phone, not, you know, doing whatever. 
that's the that's I mean, first off, your phone is a target. Somebody's gonna try to steal that. Okay, you know, you're showing them you got something like that. So be careful about something like that. When you're at the store, a lot of grocery stores will do this. They'll ask you if you want help out to your car. Take them up on it. Okay. One of the most vulnerable places you are going to be is loading something into your car. Okay, especially groceries, because you're taking a lot of bags and you're bent over putting things in the trunk and it's real easy for somebody to run up from behind you, grab a purse or grab you around the neck or grab your pocket or something like that and, you know, whatever it would be. If you can get one of the store employees to help you take your, car or your groceries out, great. Let him load the car and you can be watching what's going on. Very safe way to do it, okay? And... Just an idea, okay, get one of these, you know, a little carabiner with a strap on it, put your keys on it, because something like this is a real good weapon, okay, that I can swing around real quick. If you've ever been hit with keys being swung at you, okay, that'll back somebody up real quick. Uh, maybe you want to carry a sock with a roll of quarters in it, that would work real well too, but... You know, again, there's a lot of places you can't you can't have a handgun. You can't have a knife. You know, you might have to answer why you have a roll of quarters in a, in a sock if something happens. Nobody's ever going to ask you why you have your keys, okay? But like I said, that can be one hell of a weapon if, if you get into something like that. I'm not like I said, not getting into self defense, okay? But just something to to think about there. So, you get in your car, groceries are in, Walmart stuff's in, whatever it would be. Most cars will automatically do this. Lock your doors, okay? Make sure your car doors are locked. You don't want to be sitting at a red light with, with unlocked, uh, unlocked doors and somebody hop in, you're carjacked all of a sudden, okay? Don't run around with your windows open. I understand it's summertime, turn on the air conditioning. Believe it or not, cars do not get worse gas mileage running your air conditioning than they do with the windows open. That's been proven, okay? You're going to get the same gas mileage either way. So, use your AC. Uh, again, you don't want to be sitting at a stop sign or stoplight or something like that. Some guy grab, grab the steering wheel, throw the car in park, and you know now we can open the door, drag you out, and steal the car, steal you, hurt you, whatever it would be, okay? So, nothing like that. So you're driving home, and again, situational awareness, you know, so we're all driving, we're all, for the most part, looking forward. What's to the left, what's to the right, what's in front of me, whatever, and you check your rearview mirror about every 10 seconds. That's just normal. But if you see a car that, gee, this car's been behind me for, you know, the last two turns I've made, you know, you don't know. Maybe they followed you from the grocery store parking lot, you know. Hey, you know, there's a, a lady all by herself, you know, that just bought her groceries. Let's follow her home and then we can rob her, do whatever, find out where her house is, steal, you know, whatever would be, okay? If you have any sort of suspicion that you are possibly being followed, the easiest thing to do is make four right turns. Turn right, turn right. Turn right, turn right. You're going to be going the same direction. You just basically just went around the block, okay? If that car is still behind you, head straight to the police station. Do not pass go, you know, do not collect $200. Just drive straight to the police station, okay? Unfortunately, here in Tennessee, we don't have front license plates, so there's no way for me to get a license plate number off of a car if something like that's happening. But at least you can figure out... You know, and get a quick glance when you pull into the police station, they aren't following you. You know, gee, it was, you know, uh, a little four-door Japanese car. It was white. You know, if you can get that, at least, if you can get, you know, hey, it was a white man, it was a black man, whatever, you know, guy was wearing a black t-shirt, anything, you know, any sort of description you get, just go straight to the police station. But the four right turns works real easy, okay? Again, same thing when you're home. When you're home, the doors need to be locked, okay? Especially, I mean, if you live if you live in the city, chances are you're doing it anyway, okay? You live in the suburbs, 50-50. You live out in the country, hell, you know, the people out here leave their keys in the car sometime, you know. It's like, all right, nobody's going to do it. With what's going on right now, all right, you got to think about this. 
people are getting evicted from apartments, you know, people are looking for money somehow, okay? And you go, oh, gee, you know, I live in a good neighborhood. Yeah? Where do you think the crooks go? The crooks aren't going to steal from the poor people, okay? You know, uh, gee, the... The per the person who's in Section Eight housing getting food stamps is not a real target for a thief, you know. It's you who's got the, you know, Camaro in the front yard or whatever it would be, you know. That's those are the people who are the targets. Okay, they're going to go out to the suburbs or out to the rural area where there isn't as much police presence as there is in the city. It's easier to hide in darkness because there aren't street lights all over the place. They can follow you home, you know, and easily figure out what's going on. Lock the doors, okay? And whatever, you know, security you've got. If you've got a dog, that's great. Like I told you before, you know, uh, I did this in a video about six months ago. If you don't have a dog, one of the greatest things that you can do is get a little Bluetooth speaker and put it by your door and record some dog barking noises like of a Rottweiler or something. And if you hear any strange noises, hit on your phone, you know, play, and have that sound of a Rottweiler barking at the front door. That'll chase a lot of people away. They're not gonna. They're not coming after in, in a house off of that. Okay, you know, they don't have to see the dog. They just gotta hear it. Okay, you know, if you've got security cameras, that's good. If you've got a deadbolt on the door, that's good. Have you put three inch screws into your door frame so somebody can't kick in a door? Those things, you know, these are the things that you've really got to think about right now, guys, is your own personal security. And y'all know better than I do, you know, how vulnerable you are. Okay. Again, somebody my size versus, you know, a five foot two, 70 year old woman is going to be completely different. All right. But please, 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 head on a swivel, okay? Situational awareness is more important now than probably ever in our lives, okay? As this stuff goes on, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I promise you that, okay? I just want you to think about this and start doing this now because it's not something you go, great, I'm just going to do this. It's something that starts becoming second nature. You know, you're always looking around, paying attention to what's going on. You'll you'll go up a shopping aisle and turn around and walk back the same aisle to see who's following you. Okay. And if they suddenly turn around, you know, you know, you'll start learning little tricks like that to do things. It's very important for your safety. Okay. Thought I'd bring that one up. It was a great suggestion. I got an email to talk about. Wanted to give you a little bit of my knowledge on it, some tricks I know. Uh, but you know, use this to your advantage, be safe. Okay. You know, you can do all the prepping in the world, but you know, if you're a victim to somewhere, uh, not going to help you any, any at all. So have a good Monday guys. Pinball out.